Hi, this is Frankie Pace. Every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, The Frankie Pace Show brings you the best eclectic interviews done with comedians, singers, actors, playwrights, musicians, producers, directors, and people of all interest. You can also listen to comedy sketches like Ask the Godfather, Herb and Eddie, Gropa from Sesame Place, Huck and Finn, Pothead Lenny, Words of Wisdom by Habib, Talking with Grandpa, and of course, Frankie's Ranch. We're all here on www.thefrankiepayshow.com. Tonight I'm going to interview one of Hollywood's busiest actresses, and she's also a motivational speaker. Her name is Barbara Niven, and we're going to talk about her latest film, A Perfect Ending, directed by Nicole Kahn, right here on Frankie Pay Show. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Frankie, how are you? Oh, I love your theme music. (laughs) Really, it sounds like the Rat Pack days, kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's kind of jazzy. I, I forget the name of the artist, but uh, I, I'm a, I used to be a jazz player myself when I was a kid, so I'm I'm, I'm into that uh, Lee Morgan, Art Blakey, uh, Thad Jones, all those guys in the old uh, days. You know. What instrument? I play trumpet. Trumpet? Oh, you got some lips. Yeah, babe, I got them. <laughs> that never goes away, does it? <laughs> no. Not really. I still could play if I want to, but uh, I'm, I like doing the comedy, and I love doing this show. So, uh, you were you were born in Portland, Oregon, and uh, you're actually uh, a Kenyan. You actually said Oregon instead of Oregon. Okay, cool. Thank you. I feel so smart. You are. <laughs> and uh, so you're a U.S. and Canadian citizen. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I actually, uh, my father was born in Canada. And so as an actor, you know, you have to look at it as a business Mm -hmm. and uh, use every asset that you have to actually have a career. And um, years ago, when so many uh, productions started being shot up in Canada, I just thought, well, what if I could possibly use my dad's uh, citizenship and, and somehow make it work out so I could work up there too? And I found an immigration attorney and voila, I'm now a full dual citizen. I was watching some of your stuff. It's uh, really good work, but I also noticed you do a lot of other things. Like you, uh, you, uh, I saw this video you did on eating disorders, which was kind oh. of interesting. What was that all about? I mean, oh, you know, the older I get, the more, um, and it's probably everybody feels that way. You kind of align with not only what your favorite things to do are, such I love acting. I'm passionate about yeah. it, but I also feel like we start aligning with our purpose and what we want to do to give back as well. Mm -hmm. And so what I um, started doing um, and came out with that I'd had uh, bulimia for about 30 years and uh, ended up, um, my mother had it and my daughter had it, and going through therapy, we, um, I, you know, I'm past it now, and so what I wanted to do is use my experience to help other people. Do you, do you feel that's genetic? Is that... Uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting question, Frankie, that you bring up, because people are researching it, and they don't know if it's genetic or if it's learned, and mm-hmm. you don't... It's all about, for me anyway, was being a perfectionist, so I don't know if that is something that you actually learn from yeah. uh, your family members or from life or society, or if it's genetic so I think it's a little bit of both and um, this whole uh, perfection thing is what drew me so much into the movie A Perfect Ending Mm -hmm. that is what uh, uh, Rebecca my character is dealing with and I think it's the message of the movie is that to give up the perfection and the the judgment and really try and find your passion to plug into that and if you're not living your most wonderful passionate life Go find it. For the people listening who don't know what we're talking about, uh, Barbara Niven is starring in a movie called A Perfect Ending, which is a uh, a woman's movie. It's a love story from two women's aspects, and it's directed by Nicole Kahn. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw some of it. It was very interesting. I well, found you did. It. You, you watched some of it. Yeah. So 
interesting. Did you think it was a women's movie? Because we have a lot of men, um, and I'm just interested in your perspective, because we have a lot of men who see it too who end up weeping at the end because it, it touches a chord, I think, in well, everyone. I didn't see the whole movie. I saw basically the trailer, and what I, mm -hmm. what I got from the trailer was a true, a true to heart mm -hmm. love story of a, of a woman that was torn with herself and confused and f saw this pathway and didn't know how to to make her, her her way on that pathway. And when this other girl was involved, she came in and kind of like guided her towards what she really mm -hmm. was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's what I got from it. I mean, some of the scenes were very steamy too. I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, how did you feel about doing that? Um, well, uh, it scared me more than any part I've ever taken. Yeah. Um, but I find that the things that we're most afraid of usually mm -hmm. is hiding our biggest gold. So as afraid as I was to do this part, it's also my best work that I've ever done and yeah. probably the best part I will ever get. I am so grateful that I got to work with Nicole Kahn on this. Uh, and we worked with great actors. John Hurd was yes, my yes. husband. He was in a Home Alone. I believe he was the oh, father yes. in Home Alone and many other movies too. Oh yeah, he's been in, he's worked forever and he plays um, the, the storyline is I play a woman who's um, in her early 50s, um, and she has a wake-up call. She's been uh, judgmental, and she's wealthy, and living a perfectly pointless life, and she's even stayed with her husband after he abused her daughter years ago, which a lot of women do. Yeah. Because the oh, yeah. alternative is scarier. At least you know where you are, and a lot of people just, as Rebecca does, my character, just stuffs everything in. Just doesn't, just doesn't go there. Mm -hmm. just is judgmental, and she's very, very rigid, very um, time worthy, and and she she just has a stick up her butt, for want of a better word. Yeah. And her character has never felt passion, and her character has never had an orgasm, which says a lot about her. Hey, well, I know guys that haven't had a real good orgasm either, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? If so, then it's about time to find one. <laughs> <laughs> this story is about uh, coming up to her girlfriends, her two yeah. best friends, who say, just, you know, what are you doing, Rebecca? Just, just, what's the big deal? Just go out and find it, see what it's like. And um, in doing so, um, Rebecca just, she just blossoms. I, I just love this woman that I play so much, yeah. and it touches so much about my life and about all the basically all the women that I know um, about this one chasing perfection of, and judging ourselves with the whole media thing about what women are supposed to look like, hence yeah. my whole eating disorder. Well, I, I brought that up before, eating disorder, because I have a friend of mine who's a great singer, and he's going through hell now because his daughter has that, and he says, oh. and he says I, find, I find her vomit behind a couch, oh, and it's, it's in a, it's in a closet. If there's anything I can do to help, why don't you give him my email? Because I have some resources now, and again, I do speak on it. I speak it at mm -hmm. schools. Um, because I have to tell you, when you are in this thing, it's a disease. Yeah. And um, it's it's not as if you can just <laughs> quit eating, you know, to get over right, it. Right, right, right. It's all about emotions. And when you're in the throes of this, you I, I remember thinking that, I will never, I can't imagine life without this. It was like falling backwards into this black hole forever for yeah. 30 years, and nobody knew. That's got to be My so husband. confusing for you, though, I mean, to go through that. You know what you're doing, and you're saying, oh, I, I, I know what I'm doing. Why am I doing it, and how can I stop it? You feel you so can't. trapped. No. In, uh, yeah, it's got to be Everybody has their own reason for doing it. Mine, mm -hmm. through therapy, I discovered that mine was because I was, I was always the good girl. I didn't want anybody to ever see... Um, see the real me. I just wanted to be happy and sunshine and, mm. and cute and everybody loved me. And so all, all I swallowed all of those other feelings. Yeah. And so for me, having the eating disorder was just throwing all of that stuff up, all the stress up, just to get to zero. Wow. And so by talking about it through therapy, and mm -hmm. then now I go out and I talk about it and I share it uh, to schools and to women's groups, and by talking about it now, I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah. I've, done, I've done a couple talk shows about it, too, about the pressures to be thin in Hollywood. But it's not just Hollywood. It's, it's our society. And five-year-old kids are now saying, I'm fat. 
Yeah, the magazines, the TV shows, all of that yeah. nonsense. I mean, my daughter's living in England. She's producing out there, and she told me, she says, the, the, more, the women out there are a little bit more voluptuous, <laughs> and the actors and actresses are older on TV, and the audiences are mixed. It's not a, it's not a young generation type <laughs> of sell, you know. It's totally different. Here, it's all that marketing crap. That's I what know. does it. I need to be an actress over there now, because especially women over 50, mm -hmm. even over 40, that, that you know, as an actor, as a performer yeah. yourself, it's the, the roles get slim. Yeah. Look at Judy Dench. She's fantastic. She's I still, know. She's still going, you know. <laughs> so she she is one of my role models. So is Jenna Rollins, by the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. One of my dear Great. And this I consider it playing Rebecca in a perfect ending as my Jenna Rollins role. Oh, my <laughs> she's, God. Just, she's fantastic. Was, yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and playing this character, working with Nicole Kahn. Um, yeah, how did you meet her, by the way? How did this all come about? <laughs> now, I, I know Melanie for many years. Uh -huh. and, oh, uh, I how, love her. How did you guys all get hooked up? Yes, there, there's, there's something that strange that happened with this movie because it started uh, no lie it started almost a, a movement almost a, we've created a tribe of people mm -hmm. and i think it's it, things like that happen for a purpose right right cole con and i met um about 30 years ago in portland oregon where we're both from and we always wanted to work together we've tried so many times and got so close reading screenplays and things have just not come together yet and i had again because uh, I was just getting so discouraged with acting and the roles I was getting offered, and then nobody was starting to call anymore as I start getting older. Um, it, it just makes you reflect, and so I thought, you know what? I'm going to give it up and start doing something else. And so I actually, when Nicole and Marina Rice Bader, who is the executive producer, right, yeah. um, called me and said, let's meet at Aroma Cafe. I want to I want to talk to you about something. So we got there, and I ordered a cheeseburger and french fries, which <laughs> I never used to do. And, um, and they said, we have this screenplay, a perfect ending that we would love you to read. And so I said, sure, as I finished my entire meal, which is something you don't do as an actress. Mm. No, because I'm They just drink wine drunk, and smoke and cigarettes. It adds 10 pounds on it, and I'm already curvy. They, they all drink wine and, and smoke cigarettes. They never eat, <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> well, I like the wine part of it. I'm, I'm against smoking because my mom died of lung cancer. Oy, oy. But nonetheless, um, I, I went home and they emailed me the script, and I read it quickly, and yeah. it was so compelling, and I was weeping by the end of of the first draft and I called them and said I have to play this part I know this woman my father had passed away the year before and there were just so many life and death issues that I needed to solve within myself by playing this character and Nicole even wrote in a scene for me um, and it's my favorite scene of the movie about perfection mm -hmm. um, when you I hope you do get to see the movie Frankie because I'd love to I actually have your feedback on it, yeah. um, especially having a daughter, and especially having a friend who has a daughter with an eating disorder. Um, that my love interest in this movie, her name is Paris, and she is, oh my God, the most stunning woman you've ever seen. Like, absolutely to die for. I'm, when I die, I'm coming back just like her. <laughs> um, she and I uh, are, are doing a scene, and uh, it's about uh, perfection. And uh, I tell her in the movie that, you know, when I was younger, before kids, I had a pretty good body, you know, before menopause. And that, uh, but I never looked like her, because nobody ever looks like her. And she just says, ah, it's genetics. And you go, oh, yeah, sure. I wish we had those genetics. <laughs> and I talk about my boob job that I actually did have. And that I, the reasons that I did it were because my husband loves perfection. And it's the only thing that the two of us have in common. And then my character says, I've never felt pretty enough smart enough or thin enough or perfect enough mm. my whole life. Wow. Paris makes it better because she says all those things that make us so imperfect are what make us so perfectly who we are. <laughs> that is something. Uh, that, it's that, just, yeah. Nicole, just, is, she's just such an exquisite filmmaker. Frankie, I'm, I'm so blessed to be in this. And she also... Um, did, uh, created a new cinematic language as well um, called pointillism, which, I mean, I'm, I, I've seen pointillism art, but I wasn't really aware of the, the facts about it. Pointillism art is 
one of those paintings that are made up of little points, and then when you pull back, you see the little picture, but each point is its own little dot. Nicole did that in the, uh, the film as well, so each scene as it opens up are these little close-ups of things. You have no idea what it, uh, what it is, and soon the audience catches on to what Nicole is doing, and it becomes this, it's really interesting as she, um, as she opens up each scene to you see what the points actually reveal. And then it goes further because it's also a metaphor for life, that all of the points in our lives are what create our entire life. Mm-hmm. So she, she just does some brilliant things. And the um, Tal, who is our cinematographer, he's, he made it stunning. It's this beautiful art house movie that I just, I, it's my favorite thing I've ever done, and I'm just glad that I did this. The hardest thing for me, the scariest thing, was I, we talked about portraying it honestly. And so me, I said, yes, I do. And then I had to put up or shut up. And so I am naked in this movie <laughs> at my age, having love scenes with a woman. Good for you. Go get them. <laughs> I know. Well, it's easier said than done, <laughs> especially up on a 40-foot screen in HD. Uh-huh. But, um, but we, I just want to, the older I get, it's so important for me to get rid of all my own barriers and just portray truth. Bullshit uh, is what is what causes so many problems in yeah. our, and it messes our heads up. But by portraying truth and really letting people see who you are, you'll find that it allows everybody else to just show up as they are too, and we can all just relax a little and 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 just get rid of the bullshit. What's her What's the name of that actress that was in Misery? Uh, Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates. Now it is a woman I I respect. She took a chance and did a nude scene. Did you remember that? Yes, I, think, I did. I mean, I, when she did that, I just went, "Holy crap! You are unbelievable!" I mean, to take that shot, to take that chance. A lot of actresses would be afraid of Hollywood. And she just probably turned around and said, "Screw you, Hollywood! I'm doing this because this so. is the character, and that's yeah. and uh, that that's the way you got to be." And I and I guess hey. you know this is what you're doing, which is good, you know. It's good, but it's good, but what everybody says, and it's I still have to, it, I still have so many insecurities about this because you mm. know I am a mother and I'm a grandmother now. Uh huh. So. Putting it up there, I don't have a perfect body, and we wanted to make sure that we showed Rebecca her truth. Right. So you see stretch marks, you see, you see all of those things. You see me aging. You see my me Barbara worrying about my aging because that's right. Rebecca. She right. looks in the mirror as we all do as we get older, and you hate your neck. You know, you <laughs> you just all that the saggy things, and I, I just wanted to put all of myself in this movie so people can identify and really see themselves and then just just deal with it and so i think it's going to be a breakthrough for a lot of people also uh, it's a tremendous tremendous push for the gay community because yep. they really need this they really need something to be uh, uh, something would merit too, without without somebody saying, "Well, you know, it's the gay stuff." And, but you know, it's something that really breaks down and say, "Hey, look, w- this is the human factor. This is the human side of, of of life and who who these people are." And I think this movie will do it in the, the most dis- the most. What's the word I'm looking for? Not discreet, but oh, I can't think of the word. Yeah, well, I'm I think it's it. been really effective so far with audiences, but. Again, it's not just, I mean, it, yes, it beautifully um, is a perfect movie for the lesbian market mm. at, and the LGBT, but seriously, it's it's more of a crossover movie than I think yeah, what they yeah, ever thought yeah, it would definitely. be, because um, in the festivals that we've been uh, going into, the feedback that we're getting from men who are watching this is just incredible as well, yeah. so I think it's more of, um, I, I just don't, I think it's crossover. So we, I hope that they can uh, find a way to market it that way. Yeah. How, how many theaters are you in now? Are you uh, um, marketing? Been, I can't even tell you. I, I've honestly lost count of how many festivals we've been to, mm-hmm. and we have coming up. Um, we have um, 
we've been traveling to a lot of them, and it's been very gratifying to um, be able to be in the audience. And, man, I have to have a little wine before I <laughs> see myself naked on that 40-foot screen. Oh, come on, come on. You're an actress. You're a, you can handle frankly, it. Frankie, you're on. not a woman. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go up there and go naked, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so, see? so everybody says I'm brave, and I, and I, uh, I think, oh, my God, I hope that doesn't mean stupid. Uh, but anyway, I deal with it. It's what I plan to do and what I did. But the most gratifying part of this is the Q&A sessions that we have afterwards with people. And, and then also um, the community. See, this movie was made through donations entirely. Right. Um, right. And so we have created this film family, the the likes of which I've never seen before, and I don't think anybody else has even heard of, because we have a community that I participate in on the blogs for Soul Kiss Films. Mm -hmm. um, people are supporting each other. People are um, saying, you know what, if she can do that, then damn it, I'm going to just stand up. I'm going to be out with my truth as well. And right, we started a right, movement. Right, that's what I was talking about before. And the word I was looking for was dignity. Ah, that's the word I was looking for. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that word. Yes, that is perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Because it, I, I always felt, you know, the gay community, they're an easy mark. You know, they're an easy mark for jokes. So I'll be honest with you, when I started out as a comedian, I was doing gay jokes. And then after a while, I started to realize, you know, that's, it's a little too cruel. And why am I doing that? Yeah. You know, and, you know, and, uh, Yes, there are there are idiots and there are idiots in all fields of, yep, of people, are. and they're all good, you know. So this brings out the good, which is really a good thing, you know. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. it does. So uh, you studied with Milton Casellas. Yeah. Do you know him? Did you? Did no, you? I, I I know of him. That's very good. Oh yes. Oh my gosh, this man changed my life. He passed away about. Oh really? Did four he? years ago now. Yes. Oh. I um, I was uh. I studied with him almost 15 years and 12 years. The last 12 were in his master class mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. Saturdays. Um, everybody who, uh, oh man, I just, I want to cry when I talk about him because he, he was extraordinary, not as just an acting coach, but as a life coach almost. Yeah. Um, and uh, Doris Roberts, all the Emmy winners, all of the, um, the uh, award-winning actors, the, they yeah. would come in and out of class as, as they were in town. If they were off shooting a project, then they would come back in, award-winning directors as well. Mm -hmm. And it was a place mm -hmm. to just go and try your craft and just work the craft. Because as a performer, it can't be about oh, I want to be a big star, I want to, you know, I want to get this big job, etc. Well, those are movie stars. Those are movie stars. Then there's actors, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and when I talk to kids that want to get into the entertainment field, and you probably mentor some as well, I tell them that it can't be about wanting a uh, career and fame and uh, money, etc., because it's probably not going to happen or it won't be consistent. Right. You can only do, if you want to do something else, do it. Anything, do anything else. But if you have to do it for your soul, you have to do it for the craft. Yeah, find definitely. A way to, find a way to act. Find a way to write. Find a way to, to dance. Find a way to do comedy somewhere so that you scratch that itch, but do it for you, for the inside of you, and not for the money. It must have worked because you have over 75 titles. <laughs> So you're a very busy girl. I mean, you did Hamlet's Ghost, Meth Head, Us, Gabe the Cupid Dog, Home Invasion, The Wife He Met Online, and on and on and on. And the last lots of soaps. <laughs> you did a lot of soaps. You did a lot of yeah. TV, TV uh, made-for-TV movies, too. I've been did. really blessed, Frankie. Yeah. I've just been so blessed. And a lot of it is uh, repeat business. I do a lot of mm -hmm. time movies up in Canada, too, by the way, mm -hmm. like we were talking about. Yeah. And I've just... I feel so blessed to do what I love to do. Well, you know, if you work hard, you deserve it. That's, where, that's the way I see it, you know. As the entire economy has changed, we've all had to reinvent ourselves and add different income streams. So what I've started doing now, I've kind of, it's coming down to what my purpose in my life is. And it used to be that I was so focused on I love acting. And now what I've done and what I've turned it into is 
I'm getting the same thrill or even more about helping other people find their voice. Right. Yeah, you're doing motivational speaking. Doing too. motivational speaking. Yeah, right. But I've also started, and I have a studio here in L.A., I've created a system and a program called Unleash Your Star Power. I coach and direct people on camera and uh, shoot their videos, but I, I help them, uh, anybody in, the, in business nowadays, or a speaker or an author, even people who are directors, need to be able to present themselves effectively in the media and know how to create videos to market themselves or how to come across great in a TV or in an interview um, in, on the radio or doing public speaking to promote yourself and stand out. So what I've done is put all those things that I've been learning and honing for the last 30 years in my craft into this really easy, it's an ultimate system and oh it's just so amazing to watch people to, to sit in my chair and I just give them some adjustments and they find their voice and they are off to the races that's great that's fantastic <laughs> I know I, I absolutely it's my passion now so well I want to thank you for coming on the show and and spending some time with me I know we had a little problem trying to get you on a, a, a day before but we're here and we've done oh geez at least 26 minutes <laughs> And you are a doll. <laughs> well, thanks. A doll. I hope that we um, we can share the screen sometime. <laughs> oh God, you're too beautiful for me. I don't know. I, we I would, feel we funny. We would have a ball. Let's do some comedy. <laughs> you know, I once did. I worked with Sandy Marshall. Do you know Sandy Marshall? She. No, I don't. She. Uh, she. Well, she. She teaches uh, method and. Uh, uh, and a few other kind of courses, but uh, I had to do a scene once with this young girl, and uh, I later found out it was Jewel. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> I was a nervous wreck because she was so young, you know. And oh I, and, yes. And my friend says, "You know who that is? That's Jewel." I go, "Jewel, what? I don't know who the hell this Jewel is." And he showed me <laughs> the funny. showed me the picture of the oh. billboard, and it was hard. I was like, "Holy crap!" So I would be nervous working with you. Trust oh, me. Oh, <laughs> but you know what? We would just put that in the scene. <laughs> Take everything that's happening and put it right in the scene. I think we'd have a ball. Yeah, well, you're a sweet lady, and you're also a very beautiful lady. I've, I've seen your photos, and I've seen your work, and you're, you're a so terrific healthy. person. Yeah. And I wish you so uh, so much luck with the uh, with the film, and, and uh, you'll probably do very well with this, and there'll probably be more uh, more stuff to do. And, Thank and, you. Uh, and everything else, I hope, just works out for you. Thank you. Can I just say one more thing? Sure, sure. I just want to, again, it's the message of the movie and it's been my personal message for a long time, that if you're not living your most wonderful, passion-filled life, change it, and don't give up five minutes before the miracle, because you can make it happen. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Okay, yeah. take care now. <laughs> you too, Frankie. That was Barbara Niven, actress, terrific actress, from the film A Perfect Ending, that is now uh, in the festivals and probably in most theaters, uh, directed by uh, Nicole Kahn.